Hello, everyone. It's uh, Monday, December the 5th. Uh, we've had an additional 22 deaths. Uh, we're up to 7,627 deaths in West Virginia. Since the last time we met, we've had an additional 22. But please join me in prayer and, and support and to not let these people feel alone, please. The 7,606th death is an 80-year-old male from Wood County. The 7,607th death, a 63-year-old male from Mason County. And one thing I want to do, I want to be sure and we, that we go back and check the final total here because it seemed to me like, you know, that at our last time the number was 7,611 that we'd lost, but I want to double check that when we're done. But nevertheless, these are the people that we've lost since we've been together. The 7,608th death, a 72-year-old female from McDowell County. The 7,609th death, a 78-year-old male from Cabell County. The 7,610th death, a 56-year-old female from Harrison County. The 7,611th death, a 95-year-old female from Braxton County. The 7612th death, an 80-year-old male from Braxton County. The 7613th death, a 62-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 7614th death, a 61-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 7615th death, an 85-year-old male from Braxton County. The 7616th death, an 86-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 7,617th death, a 77-year-old male from Wood County. The 7,618th death, an 85-year-old male from Brook County. The 7,619th death, an 87-year-old female from Putnam County. The 7,620th death, an 86-year-old female from Marion County. The 7,621st death, a 73-year-old female from Raleigh County. The 7622nd death, an 87-year-old male from Ohio County. The 7623rd death, a 91-year-old female from Ohio County. The 7624th death, a 42-year-old female from Berkeley County. The 7625th death, a 72-year-old female from Berkeley County. The 7626th death, a 93-year-old male from Cabell County. The 7,627th death, an 82-year-old female from Putnam County. And like I said during the briefing, I want to double check, double check that we got these totals right. But nevertheless, please keep all these folks in your prayers. Active cases, 903. New positive cases, 590. Daily positivity rate, because we must have not tested much, 6.19. You know, our cumulative rate has dropped a little bit. It's at 8.53. Recovered cases, 607,392. There's 162 people hospitalized in West Virginia, 20 in the ICU units, and seven on ventilators. You can see that most of our, our counties are green. That's good. There's still a few yellow and everything. We'd like to get them all green. I remind you about getting your booster shots. I remind you about getting your vaccines. Please take that to heart, especially if you're 50 and older. And I also remind you to get your flu shot. Really, really, really important. Uh, our numbers continue to slowly but surely get better, and, uh, and we've got great response, 65 and older. We surely need to do better on our boosters, but, uh, you know, we'll just keep at it. All the information on the vaccine calculator is up on our, on our website as well as the the COVID-19 vaccine info line. Uh, we've got 40 outbreaks in our long-term care facilities, none in our church community, 24 inmates and seven staff cases. I tell you all the time about the homeowners assistance program is still available to you. You know, absolutely take advantage. Please just call us, call us, and we'll see if we can get you qualified. It could really mean significant dollars to you. I remind you about giving blood. It's really important. It's really, really important to all of us, but especially the Red Cross. And uh, so check with your physician and please at least consider. You know, from the standpoint of our uh, November revenue, numbers are still out of sight. Absolutely, it's just great, great, great news to West Virginia. It just keeps on coming and everything in every way. 
It doesn't mean it is here forevermore, but we've put West Virginia on a good path, and West Virginia is doing well, and we don't want to blow our blooming legs off. That's all there is to it. But uh, another $112.7 million above estimates, it puts us at a record to date or a year to date record collections at 607 I'm sorry 687.5 million dollars above above estimates almost 700 million dollars above estimates it's amazing it is absolutely just wonderful and I can remind you over and over and over that without any questions the voters you know in our last election spoke really clearly did they not they said that they absolutely want us to deliver tax cuts and deliver tax cuts to the absolute hardworking West Virginians. I hope and pray that we'll absolutely uh, su be successful in that. We've got to have the Senate, we've got to have the House, and, you, and myself. And literally, I'm all in, all in in delivering tax cuts to absolutely our hardworking West Virginians in every way. You know, these surpluses are incredible, but there's no guarantee they're just going to stay there forevermore. Just an announcement on the DNR about a lifetime license giveaway. You know, from the standpoint of our hunters and anglers, you know, who purchased an annual 2023 hunting, trapping, or fishing license in the month of December will automatically be entered into this drawing. And, and, and you know, so... You can do it if you're a resident or non-resident. You know, from the standpoint of the giveaways and everything, at the end of that time, anybody that is purch has purchased their 2023 license in December will be in the drawing. You know, from the standpoint of the non-residents, the non-residents, you know, prize will be, you know, they'll they'll receive a three-night stay at one of our lodge or or or, or at actually it's at our pipe stem resort you know uh, state park with zip line you know tickets and lots of stuff and everything and from the standpoint of uh, you know our residents that, that that buy their license in December those are the people that will go into the drawing for the lifetime license last thing I've got is today we've got GE McCabe and, and GE uh, we're tickled to death to have you as the director of the West Virginia Division of Emergency Management you do an amazing job and you have an update on FEMA's decisions, you know, in regard to flooding that we had last summer. If you'd come on GE, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Morning, Governor. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we received some information again this morning from FEMA uh, informing us that they have denied West Virginia's request for federal assistance for the remaining counties. Uh, in which the storms impacted the state from mid-July through mid-August. The remaining counties that were de just denied uh, were Doddridge, Jackson, Mingo, and Wyoming. We disagree with FEMA's decision in having deemed the damage from these storms affecting these four counties of not being of the severity and magnitude beyond the capabilities of the state and the affected local government. And part of their decision was based on uh, we had submitted documentation uh, that showed how these storms for this period of time had continued to rain. And as you said before, our grounds continued to be saturated and the runoff from these storms in creating these, these flooding events. But FEMA and the National Weather Service has classified these storms as four separate events, which has played into part of their decision. Uh, we are going to continue to work with the counties that were denied and gathering uh, information that's going to be needed so we can file an appeal uh, on FEMA's decision, uh, as we also are going to continue working with uh, the two counties that FEMA has just uh, previously declared federal disaster declarations for, which was Fayette and McDowell. We will be continuing to work with these two counties. Well, gee, we appreciate that. Uh, we always want to deliver the news. Sometimes it's not the news that we want, but, uh, but I can promise you without any question, we'll keep pushing. I mean, it's not fair in lots of ways, in my opinion, you know, from the standpoint of classifying these as four different events. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, if it, if it rains and the ground gets totally saturated and everything, and then all of a sudden, you know, 
we don't have any real relief to, to, to where the ground is able to absorb, you know, rain, uh, an additional significant rainfall, and then all of a sudden you have, you have an event like we've had where we're pushing, we're pushing as hard as we can, you know, Washington can be Washington, guys, and, uh, and so we're going to keep at it, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep you abreast and we'll, we'll keep trying as hard as we possibly can because we do believe that we need that level of relief and we do believe we're qualified, but, uh, but nevertheless, we've got, you know, you know, all you've got to do is turn the television on and watch Washington, D.C. at its best, and so, uh, so you, we know that, uh, we just gotta. We just gotta keep pushing. We'll we'll keep doing that. But that's all I've got for right now. All right. Thank you, Governor. Let's now go to Secretary Bill Crouch with the DHHR. Good morning, everyone. I just want to remind everyone to please get your flu vaccine. Uh, and as the governor says in every briefing, please get your COVID vaccine and your COVID booster. If you have not been boosted and it's been two months since you've had a COVID booster. Please go to uh, to the local uh, pharmacy in your area, to your physician, uh, to your health department, where they can uh, advise you where uh, to get that uh, vaccine. Uh, it's extremely important as we go forward. Uh, we're seeing numbers higher. The governor talked about uh, numbers in the hospital, uh, COVID uh, hospitalizations. Uh, below uh, for COVID hospitalizations on November 23rd was 114. Uh, we're now up to 165, 169. So you can see the numbers are creeping up a little bit. This virus is part of of, uh, of our daily lives now, but uh, but we can't ignore it. We need to we need to take precautions uh, and do what we can to protect ourselves and our families. Uh, uh, flu uh, is on the rise. We're seeing more and more cases. Hospitalizations for flu uh, are up as well. We have several hospitals that uh, have. Uh, have somewhat low bed capacity based upon uh, the, the rise in cases, and we're going to see those numbers rise. We're not fully in this flu season yet. So, so please take care of yourself, uh, uh, protect yourself with the vaccine for both flu and COVID. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Secretary. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from John Shaver with West Virginia News. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this question is probably for Secretary Crouch. Uh, you just spoke a little bit about flu, um, and you said, you know, we're not in that season yet. So as we look at flu, and as we look at uh, RSV as well over the next couple months, uh, what should people be looking out for, and how bad do you think it might get? Thank you. Secretary, go. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, John, for the question. Yeah, we're not in the flu season yet, and yet we're seeing uh, increases in numbers statewide. Uh, as, as I mentioned, we have a couple of hospitals that are seeing large numbers of, of cases and uh, and are becoming concerned. Uh, RSV, by the way, is down. We're seeing fewer cases over the past few weeks. Uh, those numbers uh, rose steadily for several weeks, and we were very concerned those were going to go forward into the flu season. That has not happened, so we're thankful, but we're seeing early cases uh, of the flu. Uh, we have uh, about 67 of our staff uh, pediatric beds now are occupied, so looking uh, looking good there. That uh, that's been a concern, but again, that's not as much of a concern right now as the growing cases of of influenza. So uh, parents should be uh, be be very thoughtful in terms of their children's uh, 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 cases or uh, uh, influenza uh, symptoms. And if there is any question, uh, take the child to to, to the phys your physician and and have them check. Uh, we want to detect these cases early, but uh, please, please get uh, vaccinated for influenza. Thank you, John. All right, thanks, John. Next to Amelia Nicely with West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I have a question for Secretary Crouch. Um, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Resources Office for Civil Rights is investigating alleged discrimination by DHHR for its treatment of persons with disabilities. Can you tell us the basis for this investigation and is there any merit to it? Secretary, that's you again. Yes, thank you, Amelia. Uh, yes, we have gotten that notice. Uh, we don't want anyone discriminated against and we will not uh, tolerate that. The, the question here, and, and we're, we're uh, already said we're open to the investigation, we'll provide any information requested uh, with regard to this investigation. I've talked for uh, several years now about trying to make sure that we have adequate placements 
for individuals in our uh, psychiatric hospitals. And I've said numerous times on this call and in front of the legislature that no one should live in a psychiatric hospital that doesn't have to. So uh, we're looking at making sure that we can move folks to an appropriate level of, of care. We do not want individuals uh, placed in uh, a psychiatric facility that shouldn't be there. So uh, they're looking at some uh, some cases that, uh, that uh, it's been indicated that individuals should be moved out to the community. Individuals in psychiatric, psychiatric hospitals, uh, as I've said before, are all there based upon a court order, and uh, they all have a, uh, a, a uh, sim have symptoms that are mental health symptoms, and and are there are indications for that placement. So what we're looking at here is to try to make sure folks get in out of those facilities as soon as possible and into the community. And I've also talked a lot about we just don't have enough community placements out there for these folks. So again, we're we're we will cooperate fully with the investigation and and see where that takes us. We want to make sure folks are, uh, are in, in the place they need to be, and that's considered discrimination, and we certainly don't want that. All right, thanks, Amelia. Next to Mark Curtis with Next Star Media. Good morning, Governor and uh, Secretaries. Um, Governor, I want to go back to the revenue numbers. Um, they're good again, obviously, and uh, we're, we're nearing pretty soon the $2 billion surplus mark. Uh, I, I realize the legislature is in town now for uh, interims, but they'll be here full time in, in about a month. And I'm wondering if you have any discussions yet with the leadership now that it's been chosen or planning on that to discuss, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of where this tax reform is going to come. Is the bulk of it going to be income tax reductions? Uh, will they be permanent reductions? Where are you going with this in terms of trying to get some tax relief to people in this state? What do the priorities need to be? Uh, Mark, you know, from, from my standpoint, you know, I'm, I'm having lots and lots of discussions with different people in the legislature. We have ongoing discussions, you know, we're going to have additional discussions even today, you know, and uh, when we get through with the briefing, but, uh, you know, we've got people coming in. But, but Mark, it's an opportunity beyond belief. I mean, that's just all there is to it. You know, I go back to that rocket ship ride. I promised it, and lo and behold, here it is, and uh, and it is very significant. It's not kind of significant. It is very significant, and so with all that being said, the flexibility to do lots of things is absolutely right at our right at our doorstep. But Mark, I would tell you just this too: if we don't manage ourselves correctly, this will go away, and when it goes away. If we manage ourselves wrongly at this time, it'll bite us, and it'll really, really, really hurt a lot, a lot, a lot of folks. So with all that being said, we want to be smart, you know, and at the end of the day, I, I think so many times I, I really believe that uh, the good Lord put Jim Justice here for a reason. He put Mark Curtis here for a reason at this point in time right now. So with all that being said, Mark needs to do his job to the very best of his abilities, and you'll do it because you're really good, you know. And I hope and pray that that he'll he'll have his hand on me and absolutely let me do my job at the best that I can possibly do it. I got a lot, a lot of experience. I got a lot of white hair, and uh, and you know, just because things are incredibly good, you know, I don't. I don't overreact to things. I just try to do the right things. And so, so uh, lots of opportunities and lots of discussions going on. And uh, I hope we deliver. I hope we deliver for the people in the greatest way. All right. Thanks, Mark. Next to Evan Bevins with Ogden Newspapers. Uh, thank you. Uh, Secretary Crouch, I was wondering, um, we heard the, uh, the hospitalization numbers for COVID patients. Do you have any statistics? I, I know uh, flu hospitalizations are up, but do you have any statistics um, for that and how taxed our hospitals are right now? Secretary Crouch, please. Yes, thank you, Evan. Uh, yes, uh, I, I don't have everything you asked for, Evan, but uh, we have about 554 beds available right now in hospitals. 80% of those uh, beds are, uh, are occupied at this time. We have uh, four hospitals actually filling capacity. Uh, we know a very small percentage of those cases were COVID-related, about 4%. Um, but um, 
I don't have the information you asked for on influenza. I'll try to get that for you for the next briefing. Uh, again, the information I've received is just is just that those numbers are climbing and increasing. But we'll, that's a good question. We'll get those numbers for, numbers for you for the next uh, next time we're on the air. And let me comment just one second on that, Evan. You know, from the standpoint of this RSV and flu, uh, you know, we we've been operating all the time on the fact that. Uh, and, and you know we can improvise. We we can make happen what whatever we, we you know uh, that comes to us. But but we've been operating on the on the idea that if we could stay at a max level, a max capacity of three to five hundred beds from a COVID standpoint, that we'd be okay. You know we've got 162 right now, and uh, I think that's the right number. But uh, uh, yeah, that's right, 162 right now. So, so I think we're I think we're good, but this RSV deal and this flu deal is something to really contend with. And you know, we, we saw probably about ten days ago the nation a nationwide map, and West Virginia was not, you know, raging as far as the flu at that point in time. But lots of states right around us were were rated very high, and so we know it's coming, and. Uh, and, and we got a lot of good people. We'll stay on top of it. But uh, but I, I really encourage everyone to get your flu shots. Crying out loud, get your flu shots. And, and please follow up on your boosters and your vaccines. All right. Thanks, Evan. Governor, back to you. Well, uh, did we ever clarify, you know, the total number? Are we right on the total number of deaths? Yes, we are correct. Okay. Well, that's my mistake. Okay. Uh, all right, nevertheless, we've got 7,627 people in West Virginia we've lost. And that's, that's terrible. It's just, it's just not even fathomable. I mean, that's just, in, just off the charts. You know, uh, every one of those, every single one of those, you know, is probably a, a, or is a family member, they have many, many, many loved ones that are probably still really grieving. You know, it is so, it's such a large number that in the state of West Virginia, it's just, it's really sad. So please, don't, don't just think that, you know, well, we just go on. Well, that's what we do. We just go on. But at the same time, you've got to remember these folks and don't just, just don't think, you know, well, I checked in with them, you know, uh, two months ago. Take time to check back in because especially at this time of year, you know, we, uh, we lit the Christmas tree, you know, uh, I guess on Saturday night, joyful night. And there was a big crowd of people out there. And, you know, I told them at that time, I said, you know, we have so much to be thankful for. And there's still lots and lots of people out there that are really hurting, and we need to really try to help them. We absolutely need to make sure that nobody in West Virginia goes hungry. You know, so there's so much still to do. You know, we want to continue to take advantage of these incredible surpluses and push the right buttons and help our hardworking West Virginians in every way. But, uh, but again, don't anybody forget that we've lost 7,627 people, and they're all so meaningful to all of us. You know, uh, I could go on and on, and I, and I won't do that, but I, I thank you for giving me the honor to, to be in the back of the boat and, and, and really trying to make sure that we're going the right directions. And I'll, I promise you with all in me, I'll continue to do the same thing as long as the good Lord gives me breath. I'll be right here just... Uh, just paddling and making sure that we keep keep on the right path. So thank you so much.